Hi, everybody. My name is Antoine Bosler, and I'm going to talk today about Comet, a project we've been working on for the last six months or so on how common sense transformers can be used for automatic knowledge graph construction. And this was work done at the University of Washington and at the Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence uh, with these wonderful people, Hannah Rashkin, Martin Sapp, Chaitanya Malavia, Asli Chalikomas, and uh, Yejin Choi. So I just want to start off by saying that you know, knowledge graphs are a fairly ubiquitous tool that are used in a variety of AI tasks uh, to provide real world information uh, to intelligent agents. But in order for them to be useful, they have to be able to cover the wide variety of concepts that could be useful for a downstream use case. And this means that depending on the application, they may need to be developed at an incredibly large scale. And this is an issue because scaling up knowledge graphs is not particularly easy. Using manual approaches is incredibly cost prohibitive. First, you might have a scarcity of experts for the domain that you're actually interested in building a knowledge graph for, so you might be stuck using crowd workers instead. But that, even that can get incredibly expensive depending on you know, the expressivity of all the concepts that you have to be able to cover. And this is especially true in the case of common sense knowledge graphs, which tend to have an insane amount of entities. Common sense knowledge graphs would need to understand diverse concepts such as a house, a fish, a plate but even uh, more complicated concepts such as events, like selling a house, and as we get more and more compositional, such as selling a house around Halloween, or selling a house because it's haunted, or selling a haunted house around Halloween, each of these have different common sense implications that an intelligent agent would need to be aware of in order to be actually be able to understand what's going on. Second, common sense also has lots of relations. So you would be able, as a person, to eat a fish, uh, most of the time. Uh, you'd also know that a fish can be on a plate as far as its location goes. You know that if you have a house, you'd be able to sell it. On the other hand, every single one of you knows that your fish probably won't be the one to buy your house. That's not a capability it actually has. And so a common approach towards finding ways to enumerate all these forms of common sense without having to rely uh, on manual uh, annotation has been to use extractive methods for automatic knowledge graph construction. And generally what this looks like, uh, which a lot of people commonly know as OpenIE, is that using some type of feature rich pipeline to identify entities and phrases, you're able to actually extract tuples directly from the text, such as in the sentence, born in a small town, she took the midnight train going nowhere, you'd be able to identify she took midnight train or she born in a small town. But this is still problematic um, because in general, when you use these extractive methods, you're only able to take out as common sense or as knowledge what is explicitly mentioned in the text, which allows you to run into the problem of reporting bias, which is that a lot of common sense just really isn't explicitly stated. And in fact, many times, the opposite is what's mentioned more often. Um, and this is commonly referred to uh, as the black sheep problem that was coined by Meg Mitchell, which is that the black sheep are actually four times more likely than white sheep to occur in text. And so ultimately the issues that we're dealing with and that we want to take into account are that first, knowledge, particularly in the common sense variety, is immeasurably vast, which makes it difficult to manually, enum manually enumerate in all of its forms. Second, because knowledge can be assumed, it's oftentimes not directly written in text in the form that you'd want to see, which is why extractive methods uh, won't necessarily be able to cover the cases that we need. But finally, because open text is one of the most abundant, low-cost resources that we have, ultimately, we want to be able to utilize it in some way. Luckily for us, as I'm sure we're all aware, this last year has provided uh, quite an opportunity to move past extractive methods. Large-scale pre-trained language models have really pushed the state of the art on a variety of end tasks. And I think that one of the reasons we can agree on for that is that they actually have a lot of knowledge and common sense already encoded in their pre-trained Waits. Over the course of reading billions, if not tens of billions of tokens, they actually learn a lot of information uh, related to the entities that they're uh, reading about. And an interesting property of this knowledge is that it, it gets encoded latently. So unlike extractive methods that can really only identify direct co-occurrences occurring in the same sentence or perhaps even across sentences, the language model can learn relationships by aggregating information across multiple facts that have been encoded in its weights. What they don't have yet, though, is an understanding of the explicit structure and set of, rela set of relations of a knowledge graph that a user might be trying to build. But if we can provide a pre-trained language model with a seed set of examples uh, to learn a representation of the knowledge graph relations, 
then that language model can actually be adapted to producing tuples for that knowledge graph in the correct format, which could allow a full knowledge graph to be constructed from the language model that's far larger than the seed set of tuples that we start out with. And that's exactly what our Comet framework is. It's a method for combining pre-trained language models of whatever favorite variety you like, Elmo, Bert, Roberta these days, um, along with a seed set of knowledge graph tuples uh, that you can annotate by hand or get from crowdsourcers, crowd workers, and then really just blowing up that space of tuples that you can produce using this language model. And most importantly, because this language model has a latent understanding of a far larger number of concepts uh, due to being pre-trained on billions of tokens of text, it's gonna be able to generalize to produce knowledge for a set of entities that's far larger than the ones in the seed of knowledge that it's fine-tuned on. And so ultimately, our goals in this work were to one, find a way to be able to leverage the knowledge that's embedded in large-scale language models, and then to use a seed knowledge graph to transfer these pre-trained representations to a desired KG structure that we're looking for. Ultimately, in the hopes of being able to produce novel, high-quality, and useful tuples. And we have a lot of results in the paper uh, and at the poster that I'll be presenting this afternoon, which I hope you check out. Um, but to continue, I really wanna just focus on three questions that we answered, uh, I think fairly accurately. Uh, we ran this experiment on two English language knowledge graphs, ConceptNet and Atomic. And the first question we were able to answer is what is roughly the quality of the knowledge that's able to be produced with the current approaches that we have? And so looking at Atomic, the results already seem quite promising. 78% of the tuple endings that we were able to produce for the test set of Atomic were rated as being correct by human evaluators, which actually pro, uh, approaches the 86% uh, that humans rated the, the actual test set of Atomic as being correct in these cases. And when we look at examples, we can kind of see that the knowledge being produced is actually pretty powerful. So given a seed event in Atomic, such as person X holds out uh, person X's hand to person Y, and asking it the relation, okay, well what is an attribute that we can say about person X, the model produces the generation helpful. It's important to note that it's actually never seen any of these seed events, because there's a, absolutely no overlap between the training set and evaluation set events in Atomic. Uh, if we look at another one, such as person X explains Y's reasons, and ask it, what does person X need uh, before they can do this, the model answers to no person Y. And if we you know, go with person X takes person Y's heads off and asks for what is the effect on Y, the model produces the generation bleeds, which while slightly literal interpretation of the event would probably be correct. And if we go over to ConceptNet, we see the same uh, result emerge. First of all, we're able to produce a lot of novel tuples that weren't originally in the training set. There's no such uh, mutually exclusive uh, set of events for both evaluation sets and concept net, but 92% of the events that we, uh, of the generated tuples that we produce turn out to be correct, which approaches the 95% uh, correctness rating given by human evaluators on the actual evaluation set for the subset of concept net we used. And once again, looking at examples, we see some pretty interesting cases. All these examples were randomly selected from novel tuples, uh, and we get things such as happiness is a feeling, uh, or that a bird bone has the property of being fragile. Uh, which, if you know anything about bird bones, uh, would probably be the case. Uh, even things as simple as playing a game has the prerequisite of having the game, and my personal favorite, that living has as a last sub-event dying, which, while you know, pessimistic, is also true. Um, so the second question we wanted to ask is, all right, well, is the pre-trained language model necessary? Could it just learn how to do this from knowledge graphs? I think we all kind of know the answer to this as being, no, it wouldn't be able, but there's obviously numbers in the paper to look at, but as a clear example, when we ask Comet, our model, what a mango is, it says a fruit. We should all you know, think that that's kind of obvious. But if I tell you that the only training set example for mangoes in the subset of concept that we use was that mango is used for salsa, you might expect that the model would produce something that's unrelated to fruits, and in fact, that's what happened. It thinks mango is a spice, which kind of shows that the model's able to generalize the ISO relation to be able to use its information about mangoes learned from pre-training. And finally, the last question is, does the knowledge model generalize to new concepts? And I wanna show two fun examples uh, along this line. Uh, the first being how uh, Comet is able to use composition to really generalize to new tuples. So given a subject such as man with ax and asking the model what it's capable of, you know, we might be unsurprised to see that he's capable of chopping firewood. If we then give him a mask, he's capable of cutting down a full tree. Kind of makes sense, protective headgear, very important. What happens if we put him in a house, though, all of a sudden the model predicts that he's capable of murder, which is what we'd expect from a man with an ax in a house. 
And the second cool property of Comet that I kind of want to show off is that even though it might only be trained on a particular schema for the knowledge graph training examples it sees, it can actually generalize to a far wider range of cases. So for example, for Antoine presents a poster at the conference, uh, it might produce such uh, knowledge graph extensions such as because Antoine wanted to give a presentation or to so show off, and I might be seen as creative or generous or smart. Meanwhile, as a result, I might feel satisfied and proud, and I might want to get feedback or to give a speech, and finally at the end, I might be thanked and receive feedback. Meanwhile, the rest of you might be very interested or impressed. You might want to thank me and ask questions, and finally, Others then might want to see the poster, which I hope you do later on today. So in conclusion, language models can be used for automatic knowledge graph construction fairly effectively. They produce high quality tuples that are consistently rated correct. And a lot of this knowledge that's actually produced is, no is novel. We're not just repeating the things that are found in the training set. So I hope you'll go online, use our code to train your own Comet models using your own language models and your own knowledge graphs. And finally, definitely check out the demo. It's really fun to play with, and it'll show you some of the f what you can do for with Comet uh, in your own end tasks. Thank you very much. Thank you.